Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Matthias Seider from Myronet, and I, um, I'm here to talk about flexible Magnolia hosting in the cloud, and actually flexible Java hosting in the cloud, with a little focus on Magnolia. <laughs> First, a few words about us. We are a um, VMware ser service provider, a vCloud powered service provider. That actually means we provide uh, infrastructure as a service to our customers via VMware products, especially VMware vCloud Director. And we are hosting hundreds of Magnolia CMS instances, mainly uh, public instances with, uh, from Magnolia CE, and also hosting Magnolia server infrastructure. So the whole service, build service, and everything is within us. <coughs> yeah, that's where you get more information. If you want to know more about us, go to mirocloud.com, where you get uh, the full details. OK. The first technical fail, sorry. <laughs> oh, come on. Are we back? OK. Well, before I start, a few words about uh, on Java. Uh, we think Java is fast and scalable, actually. It's very, can be very fast. <laughs> it is scalable, and it's also very stable as a platform for applications. <coughs> and, and that's the negative point. It eats memory for breakfast. That's at least a lot of memory if you compare it to other Java or other uh, platforms or other application platforms, if you want to say. So let's start with, if you deploy Magnolia, if you download Magnolia um, and start deploying it, you need at least 256 megabytes of RAM. That's actually what we, <coughs> what we provision as a, as a bare minimum. And also, if you're using SDK, for example, and you want to start it and deploy it, you get into troubles if you have that, that much RAM. And need, you need a, about 512 or more, even. <coughs> and I'm not taking Derby into account, or JavaDB, because that adds up to the RAM, which is being used in the, in the heap. So how do, we, how do we scale with this? If you have two applications, or three applications, maybe, or some, some small number of JVMs, that's usually not a big problem for you. You just add hardware, right? So if you have let's say, 8 gigabytes of memory, two servers, and that's not enough, you just add, har add hardware, and then problem solved. Or maybe you want to try to optimize your, uh, your memory app allocation. You say, oh, I see this application is not using the whole memory, which has been allocated all the time. So I'll try to optimize that and squeeze out the last bit of memory I have. We haven't tried magic yet. <laughs> Might work. I'm not sure about that. But what we've thought, let's do something crazy, or let's look for some, someone who has done something crazy about that, about memory. That's our main concern if you scale out. It's not CPU, usually. Well, depending on the application. It's not the disk or I.O. latency. That usually can be fixed. It's about memory. <coughs> and that's where we need to scale, especially in the cloud. That's what we thought of. Who has done something crazy? But before that, before I get to that, what we have done, let's see. Uh, let's look into the memory, into the JVM memory, which is um, uh, how is this bunch of memory seen by the kernel, actually, by the operating system. And I'll ask about the operating system because the operating system is giving feedback to the hypervisor, usually on a virtualized environment, what he is, see, or what it is seeing about the memory, how he is organizing the memory. So usually the kernel <laughs> only sees um, this JVM memory as a big chunk of reserved memory. It usually won't touch it. It won't manage it. And that's where our problem starts. We have absolutely no visibility into that memory. We just assign it to the JVM in a virtual machine, and then that's it. 
You can't optimize, you can't compress it, you can't do anything. Well, with a bit, little bit of hacking, that's possible, but actually you got, you got no visibility about the objects in that heap. And that's also extremely painful if you are virtualizing, which means um, usually on a virtual machine with a JVM on it, recommendations um, or best practice is to reserve the full memory amount to that virtual machine, and that kind of disturbs us in, in, in our cloud environment. Because one of, of the big advantages in virtualizing is actually to share memory across virtual machines. <coughs> so let's do a quick poll. Who's using VMware? Oh, vSphere, ESXi. Oh, come on. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Interesting. Who's using Hyper-V? Anyone? No one? Okay, some other sort of virtualization, Xen, Xen, KVM, and any other unicorn tiers? Nobody? Okay, interesting. <laughs> Have you ever heard about VMware vFabric, perhaps? VMware vFabric is a, a set of collection of products, um, and one product or one a uh, feature from the product called Elastic Memory for Java uh, is actually what, what we are interested in. <laughs> and the key in here is Java heap memory pooling. And I'll come to that, what that means. So if you look at, uh, let's say, two servers, then you have the, uh, the hypervisor in between, you have some applications, you have uh, some operating systems running, and you Basically, have every server has memory in it. And if you group that together, you have a memory pool. That's actually what VMware does. You have that, just that memory pool, and you assign it from that memory pool to virtual machines. And it doesn't matter where exactly this virtual machine is actually running on which host. So you look at the memory you have on your infrastructure as a big pool of memory. And how does, how does it work? How can I assign memory, dynamically assign memory from one host to a virtual machine on another host, or even share it with several VMs or several processes? That's called ballooning, or that's the, the driver that helps us actually sharing that memory and the coordination with the hypervisor. So that, that ballooning, that's, um, <laughs> that's a little driver or jar or program, whatever, that sits in the, in the operating system and just does one thing. It just allocates memory. And that's the, that's the trick. That's everything to it. So usually in a virtual machine, virtualized on, on, on uh, ESXi, you, you get a virtual machine with uh, memory in it and with some processes and with that balloon driver. <coughs> that balloon driver usually comes from the VMware tools which you install on, on the virtual machine. And that balloon driver helps the hypervisor understand how the kernel is assigning memory inside his domain of control. So let's add a JVM. We know that works, this, this memory sharing algorithm or memory sharing technique from VMware. It's actually working because you can oversubscribe memory. You can assign more memory to virtual machines that, than you actually have. And if we put that, that system into a JVM and not into the virtual machine because the kernel does, it does, has no control of the, of the Java heap, if you put it into the, the Java heap, you can control that memory. So. Let's say the balloon driver inflates, what happens? What happens is garbage collect kicks in, the garbage collector kicks in. And this is helping us freeing up memory which isn't necessarily being used or which isn't critical for, for the virtual machine, which can be disposed. And the balloon driver now allocates this memory and is able to tell the hypervisor which addresses of, of which pages are actually free or can be used by other virtual machines on the same host. And that's the trick. <coughs> you, 
you balance memory between host or between virtual machines. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of tricky to, to think about that, but uh, we like it. So just to, to see that on, on an example of three, three hosts, or three, not three hosts, three virtual machines, it doesn't, it doesn't depend, actually. You can uh, balloon from this virtual machine to the other virtual machine. And that means you are truly flexible with your memory. You can assign for, for an um, application which has, let's say, usually uses about two gigabytes of heap of memory. You can assign 10. Because once in a year, let's say Christmas time, this virtual machine or this application absolutely explodes. And then it's going to need a lot of memory or a lot more than it used to, to allocate. And that's how that works. So you assign a, bi a big lump of memory, let's say 10 gigabytes to that, to that JVM, and on the others two, and you're never going to use it, or maybe once in a while. And that's how this ballooning system works. So c you are actually able to, to create an elastic environment. And that's what we wanted in the cloud, if you run virtual machines in the cloud. So just to stack it up once again, you have the hardware, you have the hypervisor in between, which is abstracting the hardware, it's uh, presenting the hardware to the virtual machine in another way. Then you have the virtual machine or the operating system. You have the vFabric TC server, that's the Tomcat server, a modified version of Tomcat. And you have that ballooning jar. It's called balloon.jar. That's everything. It's put, you put that in the, the lib folder, of the Tomcat server, and then that's it. It talks to the hypervisor, if it detects that hypervisor, of course. And on top of that, you run your application, Magnolia, for example. So why, why do we, did we want to do that? You actually pay less. You have less cost if you, if you pay for less memory, be it um, the client or yourself if you're a service provider. You have less power. Well, it's not, it's not that much, but it actually, you, ha you have some savings here. And maybe less licenses. There are some licenses out there that uh, have metrics on memory. <laughs> um, th but the most interesting part for us was it's elastic. And that's what you actually ex expect from a cloud. You expect it to be elastic in any or dynamic in any way, and not fixed. You could do that yourself if you wanted to have it fixed, or a fixed size of of an application. Yeah, that's what it means. It, it, applications run more dynamically. You can run an application that has some high dependency on, on, on the current time, let's say a Christmas shop or anything, which gets run over at Christmas time but is idle during the rest of the year. Um, you have not, you, you can await from that um, out of memory event more easily, you can say, OK, let's assign two gigabytes. And if some process in there uses that two gigabytes for a short amount of time, you can actually allocate that. And you can use it. It doesn't crash. And you don't have to worry about over-allocating memory. So you don't allocate that 10 gigabytes and just waste it. Because you know some other process on your cluster is actually able to use that, that memory that you allocated. In fact, we even allocate more memory than we did before. Let's say a typical customer, um, customer uh, Magnolia instance is about 256 megabytes to more. Example, for example, if it uses some, some parts of SDK, or so, or if it has a great amount of traffic, you need more memory. And usually we assigned that memory that we thought is OK or that the customer is requesting. And it, it, he also had to pay for that, for that amount of memory, that fixed amount. And now we can allocate even more, we can allocate two gigabytes, for example, and not actually waste that memory. We can give it this benefit also to the customer. That's, that's what we wanted in the end. And we can do that because that allocation you first set is actually the maximum of memory this JVM is ever going to 
at to need uh, uh, need and we're going to consume not not more than that but not all the time and if you assign a 10, a 10 gigabytes to a, to a JVM in a virtual machine you actually need to assign this amount of memory from the hardware at all times and that's the difference when you balloon it when you share it in a cluster yeah so numbers we we did some we ran some tests, and we also run this into in production now. And we were able to save up to 40% of, of the system memory we had. So if you're talking about terabytes of memory of uh, RAM, you get into high numbers of, of actually saving infrastructure, or saving costs and power. Memory also uses power. And that's, that's what we measured and what has been said also by VMware or that's what we get of a number and even <laughs> it also works if you allocate more than you did before it's not that you you have some some big overhead or something you can safely allocate about five gigabytes or six gigabytes to to a JVM that's going to need 400 megs for example you can safely do that and don't not not waste memory And that's what all this elastic term needs. I've, I've brought that up, the term before, elastic. I like flexible even more, because that's what you expect from, from a cloud. You expect that, that dynamic workload shifting without you intervening. You can do that or let it do automatically, and don't worry about it. Also, yeah, what I've, what I've talked about traffic or workload spikes, those get flattened out, not in terms of, of memory usage or CPU usage, but those get flattened out in terms of operations. You don't have to worry about it. Also, developers don't have to worry about it. That's, that's the easy part. You don't have to design your application for that. You have to be perhaps aware if you want to do something special, but in 99% of the, of, the, of the cases, you don't need that. And that's usually what, what we think about developers want to create and not to operate, in my, my opinion. <laughs> yeah, uh, something interesting. It's actually adaptive by design because it's not going to use uh, a special technology for, um, I don't know, de deciding which, which page of memory can be used for sharing now. It's using tools that are already there. When the balloon driver in, inflates, it uses actually the, the algorithm from the garbage collection or the garbage collector to decide which pages of memory can be, can be disposed. So usually more busy VMs don't, um, don't sacrifice memory too much and you get a very little performance impact here. We, we, we were very surprised about that. It's actually by using existing technologies to decide which memory can be shared and nothing, nothing new. Um, it's very powerful on that. So more busy VMs or JVMs get more memory over time. And that's, that's what's interesting in terms of scaling. As far as far as I know, um, in theory, the the heap size of the JVM can shrink. I'm not really sure whether I ever saw that in life anywhere, but in theory, it does. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't that solve the same problem if uh, the JVM just frees memory because the garbage collector ran? It determines I don't need that much heap, not as much as X, M, X, this and that, but maybe half of it frees the memory, gives it back to the kernel. Then I don't know whether VMware can make any use of it, but wou yeah. wouldn't it solve the problem from another yeah, side? Yeah, you're right. That's that's a different uh, perspective, a different way to solve or to tackle the same problem. Uh, what you don't get if you do that is visibility. And that's the difference with VMware. That's what we wanted. We wanted to monitor the stuff. We wanted to make sure we're actually in, in the SLAs or we're actually providing that 99.999% of uptime. And that, that's what what um, actually drove the decision to, to go the VMA way. But it's, just, it's a solving kind of the same problem, but also only on, on the OS level. 
So what you have, what you what you want, uh, if you if you do that, is still a ballooning driver in the virtual machine to actually share the the OS memory. You're shifting the problem to the virtual machine. Yeah, it's it's a different approach, of course. Uh, does this uh, does this uh, 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 tool also affect uh, the garbage collection process itself? Does it somehow does it influence the the, the yeah. amount of memory that the uh, the JVM sees, for instance? Or yeah, it's it's influencing uh, garbage collection by by invoking it kind of because it just inflates itself. It just allocates memory. Yeah. And then gar the garbage collector has to react to that. If it's if it's kind of or, or set to a to a way to uh, that it don't react or uh, just does its job uh, late or I don't know not not that often, um, <coughs> it just don't don't. So you can you can influence that by configuring your garbage collector. Yeah. Yeah, it, so it depends 100% on the on the garbage collector. Normally, you yeah. when when uh, when when you run out of memory, then yeah. you get full garbage collect. But if you allocate a l potentially a lot of memory, then when would it start doing this full garbage collect? <laughs> yeah, well, it dep that depends very much about. That's very difficult. Um, now we're talking garbage collector stuff, and um, it depends how you configure it. Actually, yeah, uh, that's. That's the art of of configuring that uh, for Magnolia, for example. You complete you com configure that completely different for an application like Magnolia and an application like some, I don't know, um, a desktop application, for example. It's 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 a completely different approach. Yeah, but you're still um, the the Baloney driver just does something to to trigger or to to wake uh, the garbage collection and do stuff. Yeah. Well, the um, ballooning surely helps running those apps with a lot of memory, but it does not solve problems with uh, memory leaks. Do you? M yeah, right. Do you monitor them now constantly yeah. and uh, um, contact your clients whenever you see that the memory usage is constantly yeah. growing? Yeah, uh, that's actually a problem. Um, from it's deeper down that problem. It's by design that memory leak problem, right? Um, you you can't prevent it obviously because the memory leak in its nature uh, is using more and more memory. Uh, all uh, everything that can be delivered by the host is going to that to that problem. Um, what we wanted is, as I said before, is the visibility into that process. So you can actually monitor how much ballooning your or how much you are ballooning via vCenter, and then you can um, yeah trigger whatever you want with that. So you can. Uh, trigger some scripts or some PowerShell stuff or um, uh, I don't know what it, what <laughs> what VMware tools are are available to orchestrator for example, and you can kick into the application and then restart it for example or make a some sort of um, information collection and heap heap dump and everything and then send it to the client. That's possible too, yeah, of course, and that's also why we did it that way. Yeah. Um, just, just for my understanding, um, does it mean that the overall sum of the JVM heap sizes of all the virtual machines exceeds the physical memory? <laughs> uh, yes, it does. Yeah, it can. Okay. Yeah, of course. Because if it, if if it doesn't, then why not allocate the whole available memory to to every VM? I mean, it, it, the ballooning only yeah. makes sense if the overall size is larger than the physical size, of doesn't course, it? Yeah. Okay, that, thanks. That's it, yeah. You actually want to save memory, but you also want to have it the dynamic way, and that's that's why we, we implemented it that way. So you the one goal was to serve, save memory actually, and the other goal was to have a dynamic environment to allocate memory to applications. Yeah. But you're right, it do, it does make more sense or Sense um, when you have when you allocate this or when the sum of allocations is greater than the actual physical memory you have. Yeah, right. Or not even physical. It may be uh, memory you have in that resource pool. So if a customer wants to run um, an application with us and assigns 10 gigabytes of memory but pays for five, that's the difference. That's where you get the benefit. Yeah. 
that leads directly to my question. What if it would happen that all the peaks of the apps are at the same time? So all have on Christmas a high consumption. Yeah. How you share then by percentage or? Uh, you don't. You, you swap. And that's, swap. Okay. that's, one, that's a, a use case which, uh, which just doesn't help. But you're, you're talking about just one application, isolated. And that's usually not the case for a service provider like us, where you have a lot of applications on. And that case can happen. It, there's a chance, but the chance is very low. More and actually, rate. yeah, right. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that's it.